I'm Linda of Windy Oaks, and I'm so glad you're here with me. Today, I'm going to be making felted soaps. It's a great holiday gift, very quick and easy, and very pretty and practical at the same time. Uh, these are just a couple of the ones that I have that we practiced on. And today, I'm going to be doing the ones that we're actually giving to my family and friends as holiday gifts. So if you want to know how to make felted soaps as gifts or for yourself, this is the video for you. Thank you for joining me and thanks for being part of the flock. Felting soap is super easy and it's so practical. One of the nice things about wool is that it shrinks tightly to the soap, but the scales on the wool actually make a great exfoliant. You basically have a washcloth and soap in one, and it's really great. The nice thing also is that wool is biodegradable, so you're not putting more plastic or uh, plastic microfibers into the environment. It doesn't take a lot to get started felting soap either. You only need a few things. You need soap, of course. You need fiber. Now this is a Shetland alpaca blend. And then you need hot water and cold water. You can see I've actually got some ice cubes in here to keep it really chilly. The hot water should be just about as hot as you can stand to touch. You don't want to burn yourself. I have my trusty electric kettle here and I put it to about 75, 80 degrees and mix it in with some cooler tap water to get a good temperature. I'm also going to be using some old nylons. Uh, these are great for doing multiples at once and they keep the fiber in place until it's felted enough that it doesn't need any assistance staying together. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take just a little length of my fiber, I'm going to open it up and if you find any little bits of VM like hay or straw, pull them out. So I'll pull it out a little bit flat. I'm going to take my soap and I'm just going to wrap it over. And I'm, I'm not trying to strangle it or anything, but I am wrapping it fairly firmly. And you want to not just go in one direction, but you want to make sure you get all the sides. And this is definitely not covered enough. Take another length and I will keep wrapping it. But you don't want any bare spots. As the fiber felts down, it will stretch over the soap. So you want to make sure that there's no spot that as the fiber shrinks gets left open. One of the other things that is a good thing to do before you start felting your soap is cut off any sharp edges. Uh, I just use a potato peeler for that. Nothing fancy. and you just shave off the sharp edges. All right, I think that's a pretty good amount. And if you find after you start felting it that um, you have some bare spots, you can always add more fiber. That's not a biggie. I'm gonna take my nylon and I am just going to put this in here. Like that. And if it's long enough, you can actually put multiple in the same one. So in this one, I'm just going to really snug it down there, put in a few twists, and then tie a knot in it. Now I like to do a half knot that's easy to just pull loose. If you don't want to reuse these, you can just put a whole knot in here. Or if you want to reuse them, you can do a half knot like I did, or you can use rubber bands or something else to keep it snug and tight while you're felting. So I've got my bar of soap and I'm just wrapping my fiber around. <laughs> The 
soap I'm using is actually made by a friend of mine, Angela Cook of Little Cove Soap Company. Uh, she's local to me and makes amazing soaps, a lot of them using milk from her dairy cow Marge, and I will put up a picture because Marge is adorable. And they're just lovely soaps. I've got a couple unscented because my mother is very sensitive to scents. And then I've got some citrus scents and some herb scents. And they're all wonderful. I mean, really great soaps. I'll put a link to her uh, website in the description because she's absolutely wonderful. But you want it as hot as your hands can stand. And you're just going to absolutely get the soap soaked through. Uh, I'm using a boot tray here. Not only is it um, really handy for keeping mess at a minimum because it'll help any splashes from going over the table. And it makes cleanup super easy. This also has these ridges on it and they're great for rubbing and agitating. Most of the time when you're doing fiber arts, you want to avoid felting your fiber, but this is a different situation. Hi, it's Editing Linda here, and I just wanted to give a quick tip that I forgot to mention in the video. When you first start your felting, you don't want to agitate harshly. You want to be very gentle. And the reason is you've wrapped several layers of fiber around that. You want to give the layers time to adhere to each other into a fabric. If you felt too quickly, the layers will felt down themselves and they won't connect to each other. So when you are felting, do it very gently at first, and then once you have a fabric starting to form, then you can get more aggressive with your felting. And I am just going to spend some time rubbing it between my hands. And just rub, rub, rub. And this will take a while. It, it can take anywhere from five minutes to, it can take about five to 10 minutes, depending on how much fiber you have on it. One of the ways you can test if it's starting to felt is just pull it up. You can feel when it starts to become a fabric. Right now it's still just loose fiber. Every once in a while, go from hot, I'm just going to squeeze that out there, to cold. Here's where we are doing something that will make a lot of fiber artists freak out. If you haven't heard the saying, cold to hot matters not. Hot to cold can't be sold. When you are washing yarn or fiber, you want to be very careful not to agitate and not to go from hot to cold suddenly because it shocks the fibers and they shrink and contract. But when you're felting, especially with wet felting, that's exactly what you want. You want the fibers to contract. I'm just rubbing it against the textured boot uh, tray here. And don't forget the edges. Can't forget the edges. You can see how the fiber is just moving around under the hose. Well, that's that says it's definitely not felted yet. It'll be much firmer and harder when it gets to felting. I'm gonna go back to the hot. Felted soap is a wonderful gift and it pairs very nicely with other handmade things like woven tea towels, knit washcloths, or other kitchen and bathroom goodness. All right, so you can hopefully see that the fabric under here is moving a lot less than the hose is. There's still a lot of loose fiber in there though. At this point, I can tell it's just starting to felt, so I'm gonna pull it out of the hose. Yep. And you can see there's a little bit loose here, and I'll felt that down, but the rest of it is really starting to come together. I'll just tuck that over and we'll spend a little time rubbing that in. This is also a great project to do with children, as long as they are properly supervised. So and if a piece really gets stubborn and doesn't want to be felted in, you could always needle felt it until it starts to stay put. There are lots 
lots of things you can do with the little bit of wool left over once the soap is gone. That's something a lot of people ask. They're wonderful as kitchen scrubbies. They can go right into the compost. Some people actually cut them open and use them to stick slivers of other soap into it so that they have something to hold on to the slivers. But the nice thing is it doesn't go into a landfill and it will biodegrade over time. And you'll find different fibers will felt at different rates. Some of them will felt very quickly and some of them seem to take forever. All depends on the structure of the fiber of the individual strands and the overall fleece. It may seem like a lot of the soap is coming out while you're felting, but it really isn't. There will be plenty of soap left when you're done. And you can do this with just about any soap. You can do it with ivory or dial or any of the standard soaps, or you can do it with fancy soap custom, locally made, organic like I'm using, or you can get it from the grocery store, doesn't matter. And you don't have to use white fleece either. I'm using the white on these unscented soaps and I'll be using other colors of fleece on the other scents. And I'll be using a specific color for each scent so that I can tell them apart at a glance after they're felted. So when I'm feeling, what I'm feeling for is the fiber moving under my thumbs. And you can see right here, it's still moving. Everywhere else it's doing pretty good. But right here where that join was, that's, so it's moving pretty well right here, but right here, or it's not moving very much down here, but up here, we've still got a lot of unfelted. You can see the fiber is moving a lot. Whereas on this side, the fiber is not moving very much at all. So I'm going to spend a little more time in that spot. I have a tray already ready. I have some of that kitchen cabinet liner that I put on it just to keep it up off the tray to let any moisture drain. And I will let that dry for several days. And then I'm going to uh, needle felt a design onto these. I will do a video on needle felting the soap and that should be up in about two weeks, depending on how filming goes for that. And now I just have about 30 more soaps to go. Have you started thinking about what holiday gifts you're giving? I feel like I'm starting pretty late working on this in November, but it has been a busy year this year. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, felting soap is super easy little time consuming, but not hard at all. Thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave in the comments what you're planning to make for your holiday gifts this year. Thanks so much for being part of the flock and I'll see you next time.